everybody, and welcome. Oh, you're really far away, man. And welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall motherfucking poetry fucking podcast. Where? Today, we're going to talk about a series of conversations I've had that all seem to coincide. And it's one of those things where... Like, is it coincidence or is this something that people are dealing with right now? Okay. First off, let me let me do some things here. I do want to thank everyone who has been picking up poems about fucking. It's selling very well and I'm very happy with it. And thank you all for making that possible. Earlier today, I was putting together those books and trying out my uh, paper cutter. Doesn't work. Like, I mean, it cuts paper, but what I'm trying to get it to do is not happening. So there are going to be some of these with deckled edges and some with not. All right, so let's get to those motherfucking shout outs. Just want to say thank you to all of you. Okay, so I want to give a big thank you to all the motherfuckers over at Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Chase, to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. And then over in the thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Alan, and to Jan. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. And then in the anarchy crew, the swinging swingers of Swingtown, I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Hannah, to Thomas, to Tim J. To Lisa, to Josh, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to Andrew, to Tim J. And to Chill Baby. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking awesome. And then for the biggest motherfucking thank you. That goes to our number one chappy in the chapbook of the month club. And that is the SDG. Thank you. You are fucking awesome. Now, poems about fucking. Still out. Go get it. It's selling well. I like that. Um, Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, out now. Pick that up. Um, by this time, I think I would have already done my first uh, Poetic Anarchy with Matt Wall open mic workshop scavenger hunt thing. Um, there will be links to this down below, so if you would like to partake in that fun fucking thing, it's going to be every first and third Thursday of the month. Hell yeah. Let's do it. And then March has a couple things coming up. Um, one is a winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. The crowdfunding campaign will be going on. And there's so many awesome tiers that you could be a part of. It's going to be great. I don't know if I got accepted yet or not, but I'm going to apply to um, a zine fest in Oakland, California that takes place in May. So if you are in Oakland or in Northern California and you would like to see me, let me know. And then um, the LA Zine Fest, I think, is also in May. Um, I don't know if I've been accepted to that yet either. And, oh, and I'm going to be the feature poet at, which one is it? Shit, might just be the word is right. I don't know. Was it the other one? I don't know. But um, I think it's on March 11th I'm going to feature. Obviously, I will know more about all of this stuff soon. So there's that. So with all of that shit fucking said, that's kind of butt plug territory to be honest, but I'm glad we did it. Oh, did you know that fucking, um, you're supposed to give this show fucking five stars on fucking iTunes? Have you done it yet? You should. Are you subscribed to me on YouTube yet? I don't know. You don't know? Well, you should be. Are, are you, have you joined my mailing list and got that free book yet? Have you? You don't know? Well, I'm asking you. Fuck. You don't know? Tell me. Do it. Oh, my God. You are fucking exhausting. I'm not going to say who I was talking to because it might be kind of a private thing. Not necessarily private, but just like, you know what I'm saying. Like, not everybody wants, to, wants me to air their fucking dirty laundry. That's something else that came up. I was talking to some people. One person said... You know, I want to open up to you more and talk to you about stuff, 
but I'm kind of afraid that whatever I say to you is going to be used for fodder in your poems. They didn't use those exact words. They have every right to think that because I fucking do that. Again, for those of you who don't know, um, but you do talk to me, if ever you don't want me to mention something, say, don't write about this, but, and like, we're golden, that's fine. The second thing is, I had somebody say, hey, I wanted to talk to you about this thing, but I don't want you blabbing about it on the fucking podcast. So, again, if you don't want me to talk about something on the podcast, just say, hey, can you not do a podcast or a video about this? Perfectly fine. So this first question comes up because some of the people, and this is going to narrow it down, but some of the people in the Anarchy crew have been reading um, Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act. And it's amazing. And I can't fucking recommend it enough to anyone who is a creator of any kind. It's a great book. It will help you get the fucking book. Oh, and then once you get it, you have to actually fucking read it. Okay? So, there's that too. So, here is the question from the unnamed poet. Do you think it's true what Ruben said about your past and present work? And that one isn't better than the other? Not looking for validation... I know if you say that, it seems like you are, but promise I'm not. I'm always paranoid that I seem like I'm fishing for something. I've just been thinking about it. And then I said, nothing is any better or any worse because it's not for us. It's for the reader. The reader decides. We are the worst judges of our own stuff. We always compare. It's meaning. It's a meaningless task to do that. And then the poet says... How do you get the evil out of your head that wants you to judge and compare? I'm constantly in this annoying battle that I shouldn't even be. Maybe I need to think about the reader or connecting more instead of just being hungry for that feeling where I'm fucking possessed by I don't know what and then a poem I can't believe I wrote is there. I have all this ability. I know it's in me. I can do it again. It's just I've been waiting longer and longer in between those poems and I'm impatient. Maybe all of this is just what I need to go through as I grow and become whatever I'm going to become. I've only been writing for a couple years. Okay, so then I said, what you need to do is stop thinking. It doesn't matter how long you've written. It doesn't matter how your other stuff is. You think way too much about everything other than just writing. That's all. Just write honest and from the heart. That's all you have to do. Nothing more. This thing came up about what we think our best stuff is and the more you write there it, it's this weird thing and i think this is kind of how it is with children too when you have one kid you love that kid and then you have another kid and you're kind of comparing like your parenting ability and everything from that kid to the next kid and like oh shit i fucked up here maybe i should do this better here but once you start having a lot of kids you just don't give a fuck anymore you, you just let them fucking run free, fucking naked or in their diaper out in the street and in the gutter. You don't give a fuck. You're watching fucking TV and fucking having chips. Nobody gives a shit. But, like, that first kid, you fucking are on top of all the time. The second kid, you're constantly thinking of where you fucked up with the first kid. And you can't get your fucking head around how to just fucking be a parent. And just let your kid fucking be your kid. And then again... Once you start having multiple kids and they're just falling out of you like fucking butter, you don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I think writing poems is the same way. Where when you have that first big batch of fucking poems that like really just came from you. And a lot of that is because that shit had been stewing in you for years. So when you finally put that out, not only do you feel like this fucking relief that it's finally out but it's shit that you've been like that's been festering so like it's almost like if you had like a really big zit or something that you were just like waiting to fucking go and it's like painful and it hurts but it's always there and it's an eyesore and then you finally just squeeze the shit out of it and that motherfucker explodes and the core fucking hits the mirror and bounces off and hits you in the face you know what i'm saying like the the relief the the instant relief where it's just like oh you know that's what that first batch of poems is like and when you try to recreate that feeling 
on a, your next batch when there hasn't been that much time for the festering and all that shit to happen you're like just picking at scabs and going why doesn't this feel like that one thing felt so there's that but then the second side of this is we don't know any of this shit because the people who are reading your work don't know how much time went into that first batch they don't they have no fucking idea they might think that the same amount of time went into the first batch as did the second batch they have no concept of that okay they're just going to like what they like the sound of what they feel connected to what speaks to them that has nothing to do with all that shit we're talking about about writing that's a completely different thing the reader's perspective is completely different than yours and this is where i'm talking about how different conversations i've had have gone into the next conversation so next thing i wanted to talk about here is i had a dude who submitted some poems to me for the blood rag and i read the poems and all of the poems were good and i i can't stress this enough all the poems were good but i only took like there was one that i didn't take i took all the rest of them for the blood rag and they'll be coming out in subsequent issues or whatever but there was one poem that I didn't take. And normally, when something like this happens, you write the poet and say, hey, you know, I'm going to take this. I'm not going to take that. And they're usually like, great. I'm so excited. Thank you. I got an email from this dude. Kind of, like, I don't think he was mad, but he could have been mad. I couldn't read the tone in the email. But he was like, I'm really surprised you didn't take this poem because... That's my favorite poem out of this bunch. And it's kind of like one of my better poems. I don't know why you didn't take it. And I was like, well, that's fucking weird. So then I wrote him back and I'm like, well, look, like it's kind of vague, kind of lofty, and it doesn't really fit what the blood rag does. Like it's a good poem. I'm not saying it's not, but it just doesn't fit this zine, you know? And so I thought that was really fucking weird. I was talking to another poet who submits a lot. And we both were talking about how kind of strange that conversation was, that interaction was. And then it, he said to me, you know, every time I send my poems out, like my least favorite one is always the one that gets taken. Like that's the one that they always pick. And the ones that I think are great either come back or like they're like, yeah, we'll take this one too. But like we really like this other one. The thing about that that was really weird is that I remember I have gone through this as well, especially with uh, Mad Swirl when I got published in Mad Swirl. I, I can't remember how many poems they said you could send. It was like five or something like that. And I had four poems that I thought were just fucking bangers, you know, and I was really excited to send them. And then I was like, well, I could send up to five. Maybe I should just throw another one in there. Fuck it, you know? And I went through and I found some poem that was one that I had written the day before that I didn't really think anything of. Sent that poem in with the other four. And they only took the one that I sent in. Like the one that I wrote the day before. The ones that I thought were fucking amazing, they sent back. But they took that one that I didn't think much of. And I was like, what the fuck, man? But I didn't write them and say, hey, listen here, guys. It was just like, it was a weird fucking thing. And then that got me thinking back to the thing I've said over and over and over again that a lot of people fucking argue with. That every poem is someone's favorite poem. Okay? The poem I sent to that magazine, like, I didn't think much of it, but to that magazine out of the stuff they knew of my stuff that was their favorite weird couldn't believe it the one poem i didn't accept was that one dude's favorite poem and he couldn't believe that i didn't accept it you know and i remember um when somebody sent me three poems and i took all three of the poems but when i wrote back saying i'll take these poems or whatever i remember kind of gushing over this one poem thinking it was really really cool and honestly it was the poem that sold me on this poet and i wrote him and i'm like oh 
this this is great. I love how this, and I just like gushed. Okay, he writes me back, and he's like, "Wow, I didn't think you were really gonna like that one. I thought this one you would have liked more." And then, the, like the more I'm thinking about this, this is a conversation that happens all over the place, all the fucking time, where we as writers, we as poets can't take our fucking blinders off for two fucking seconds to see that fucking art is subjective and everyone is going to have their favorite. When we write our poems, and I've said this a bunch of times too, once you write your poem, it is dead to you. It does not belong to you anymore. It is out there. It belongs to the fucking readers. And the readers will either take them and toss them aside or cherish them as their favorite poem, you know? And it's not us, it's not our job to judge which poems those poems are. And in a kind of separate note, I guess you could say about this, I have my new poetry collection. Um, the the pre-order Kickstarter thing is happening March 1st. So make sure you're aware and figuring that out but i sent because the original run i had of it like when i first put the book together not the run but the page count was over 300 pages and i was like this is way too fucking long i really want to get it like around 200 like that would feel good like that would make because like end of everything was 100 pages fingering the mundane was like 300 pages so I'd like to have it like around two. That would feel good, would feel nice. So I didn't know what to do. And I took some poems out that I just didn't think were very strong. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'll just take these ones out here, here and there. And then I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know, I know a lot of poets that I really fucking respect. Let me send my book out to them and have them kind of beta read it. And I asked them, I'm like, let me know what your five favorite poems are and what your 10 or what your five least favorite poems are. And then that way I thought like I could get some sort of consensus, especially with the poems that nobody likes and, or that are their least favorite. And I could take all those out and then the poems that people really liked, I could place them in the book in different places to where it's more beneficial to someone reading the book, you know? So I sent this out to maybe 10 people, eight or 10 people, and I'm still waiting on two people to get back to me on it. But this is what blew my fucking mind. All of everyone's top five poems are completely different. There is not, oh wait, no, two people had a poem called Metaphor of My Life. Two people had that in their top five is like one of what they thought was the best poem in the collection. So that poem, at least someone or a couple people both liked the poems that everyone didn't like completely different. There is no, there is absolutely no like common ground on any of that. And that blew my mind. I thought for sure that if there were stinkers in there, that, a bunch of people would go, yeah, these aren't very good. But every single person gave me a different list. And two people sent me lists of 10 of each, which was kind of hysterical. Um, awesome. And I appreciate the feedback. Um, but the, the fact that nothing overlapped on really the good side or the bad side. And believe me, I had three poems that I thought were the best three in that collection. And I'm trying to think here. I think one person picked one of those three, if I recall. I have a list here. Eh, fuck it. Yeah, I think one person picked one of the top three poems I thought were in there. It, it just goes back to this whole thing where we do not know what people want. We do not know what people like. Everyone is different. And the fact that everyone is different should really put to bed this whole fucking idea that poetry is objective at all. Like, there is absolutely 
nothing to that unless you are a formalist and you're being a stickler about form. I just can't believe it. Like when I go to like Poetry Foundation or um, any of these other sites that are publishing poetry and I read what's coming out, I hate nine out of 10 of the poems I read. And the one that I didn't hate, I just was apathetic about. I was like, "Hmm, whatever. So obviously nobody fucking cares you know like nobody cares in the sense of a collective you know everything is individual to the person so when you're writing and you're freaking out about oh god i don't know if this is going to be good enough i don't know if this is going to be good enough you know don't fucking worry about that because it really doesn't matter when you write something if you're being true to yourself if you're being honest and just like bearing it all, you will find people who will love that poem, even if you don't like it. Believe me, because there were poems in my collection that I didn't even really like, and they were kind of in there just because it was the time period that I wrote the poems in. And some people really like those poems. Can't believe it. But it's true. What I'm going to do with my poems now um, is... I'm going to be, the chapbook for March is going to be um, a chapbook basically called Runners Up, and it's going to be all the poems that were supposed to be in the book, but either because I didn't want them in the book or other people thought they were kind of weak, that they ended up in this other collection. Now, is that to say they're bad? No, because I guarantee some of you are going to read that chat book and go, dude, these poems are great. Why aren't these in the book? Man, the book would have been so much better if these poems were in it. Guaranteed, because that's how all this shit works. Nothing is better or worse than something that you've already created. It just is. That's it. We create, and that's what we do. So... If you have any questions about this or you want to talk about this some more or you have any stories like this, I would love to hear stories like this because people need to fucking hear this shit. Seriously, if you're out there and you're like, oh, yeah, dude, I sent a poem that I thought was going to be like a shoe in and it fucking wasn't. And they took some other junk ass poem I had. If you have any stories like that, please send them in so we can kind of be this big fucking Lonely Hearts Club band or traveling pants sisterhood or something that you know let's let's grieve together and understand that we are not the judges of our own work okay let's do that so yeah so i guess that's that and so now we will go plug some butts so now here we are plugging butts all that shit i just said do it again poems about fucking pick it up Poetic Anarchy Volume 3. Pick it up. Winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. Get ready for it. It starts March 1st. Come to the Poetic Anarchy Open Mic Night Scavenger Hunt Workshop thing the first and third Thursdays of every month. Um, If you are in Oakland, let me know. If you are in L.A., let me know. And um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that you want to talk about on the show, write me. I hate Mountwall at gmail.com. If you want to do a mentorship session with me, Go to IHateMountWall.com slash mentorship. Read all the stuff about it. When you know what you want to do, send me an email. IHateMountWallGmail.com and we will shoot the shiznat about it and set up a time where we can make that thing fucking happen. Um, Next episode, I'm going to be talking with the wonderful Jessica Fields about her book launch um, that she did in November and kind of talk about how the first book launch kind of thing went how it felt afterwards um just kind of what's going on and what went into um the marketing that she did for that so if any of you have a book coming up soon this is going to be an episode that you will definitely want to hear about so that will be awesome and i'm wondering 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 if there's anything else and i don't think there is so everybody out there in fucking podcast land Keep buying my books. Type fucking hard. Okay?
Kisses, everyone. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.